above this node. Pretty right here. Did you know peppers are a perennial plant? Most of us grow them as annuals because we have a winter killing frost that we say our peppers just won't survive through that. And to some degree that's true, but there's some stuff you can do to get your peppers to perennialize and overwinter them so you can start from a plant like this instead of starting from a seed. Now there's nothing against starting from seed, you can grow amazing varieties that way, but if you have a pepper that you really like the flavor of, you really like the production of, you may as well overwinter it. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the three things you need to do in order to successfully overwinter your peppers. So the first thing we need to do is cut it back. There's a lot of extra growth that, while it was great when this pepper was putting out fruits and ripening those fruits up for some delicious salsas, it's not gonna be so good in winter because the plant's going to go somewhat dormant, growth is going to stall, and we don't want it putting its energy into all these long stems and leaves. So we need to grab some pruners, we'll grab some gloves, and let's go ahead and hack this back. What we're looking at here is the base of the plant, and then the main stem comes here. We have another offshoot right here, and then as we turn the plant, there's another Y split right here. And that's kind of it. There's these three main stems. And so we want to be cutting it back pretty aggressively. So I'll show you exactly where I'm going to cut. My first cut is going to be on this stem right here. So let's go ahead and zoom in and let me show you exactly where I'm going to be cutting it. We're going to go for right around here, right above this node. Pretty severe cut. We've taken quite a bit off. I'm also going to prune off these leaves. We'll just toss these in the pot as a little bit of leaf mulch but we don't want any leaves on here while it's going dormant. Next, we have to tackle this long stem right here. So as you might imagine, we're gonna be going in and I'm gonna be taking it off right there. We now have one stem remaining, our big kahuna stem. And as you might imagine, we're gonna take it off low, sort of near that Y branch, right about here. We'll prune off this leaf as well. Finally, we have our lonely branch right here, which I'm just gonna take off right here. So we've cut this back to a considerable degree. Okay, our next step is to backfill with just a little bit of potting soil, provide some extra fertility. You could dig out some of the existing potting soil, but this was somewhat low planted anyways, and so there's a little bit of extra room. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that that's happy frog for anyone wondering and I'm sprinkling in just a an organic granular 555 on top, which of course I am now gonna go ahead and mix in. And you can see we're still below the Y. I don't wanna plant again, like I said, too high. So that's really all we need to do as far as the soil amendments over the winter. And now it's time for our final step. The last thing we're gonna do is top this off with just a little bit of mulch for some cold protection as well as some soil protection. So let's top that off. This is just a little bit of micro bark, but there's a ton of different things you could use. You could use composted leaves, you could use shredded leaves, you could use straw. Whatever your favorite and most locally available mulch is is perfectly fine. But now we have successfully mulched it up and protected it for the winter. So while it might look a little scrawny now, we have set it up for success as it goes through the winter. Now it's important to note that if you're in a cold climate where temps in the winter will drop below 45, 50 degrees or so, you will want to protect this even further, maybe even bringing it indoors under a little bit of supplemental light. Oftentimes you don't need a whole lot as long as it's not completely dark. In my zone, zone 10B, I can leave this outside and it's gonna be fine. My temps very rarely get below 50 or 45 degrees. So I'm going to leave mine outside, but if you'd like to see updates on how an overwintered pepper comes back, definitely make sure to like and subscribe. I'll be doing some follow-up updates. And I just wanna say that this is one of the fun things about gardening. Of course you can grow peppers as an annual, but if they're a perennial, and like I said, if you liked it, if you like the genetics and the flavor and the production, why not experiment with bringing something back? Because boy, can you get a head start on your season when you're growing from a perennialized overwintered pepper versus starting from seed. So until next time, good luck in the garden and keep on growing.